I wanted to make a video to show you um, a few different ways of using um, a large hake brush. So instead of using all the um, sort of regular brushes, normal brushes that you paint with, um, a hake brush is something designed to cover lots of paper, um, cover a lot of area, um, loosen up in style. And so there's a few things that I want to share with you. If you uh, watch this video, you'll see a few different ways in which you can get some nice markings using the hake. So you can see on the paper I've already, um, I wanted to be a bit more structured in this video. So I have, as you can see, drawn out the um, the painting. I've drawn a few trees. There's a bit of a distance, in the distance you can see a couple of uh, hills, mountains. And we've got a river running through the sort of middle half of the scene. So I've got my scene all mapped out. It's a nice woodland scene. There's a river. Um, there's a bit of sky there, as you can see. And that's what I'm working on now. And then I'm working on the hills or mountains. Um, I'd say there were more hills than mountains. And uh, I'm just dropping in various different colours just to make this a little bit more interesting. And again, I, I don't know how much of this I'll be able to see uh, at the end of the painting because I do have lots of uh, trees in the middle and foreground. So I'm using uh, green mixed with yellow and then dropping in different colours like orange, um, brown and just all these nice earthy tones just to give a little variation in the hills. And now I'm just adding um, the, the foreground um, land. And you can see I'm going quite um, going for quite a bit of colour in this uh, foreground. Um, even touching a little bit of red and orange. And just letting those mix and mingle just to give a little bit of interest there as well. So I kind of like this, I'm pushing different colours, um, using um, a more colourful palette. Um, just not being um, restrained by um, colours that you may normally see in scenes like this. Uh, I wanted to mix it up a little bit and just add my own sort of variants on the colours. So let me know in the comments what you think. Um, should I stick to local colours? Do you stick to local colours? And when I say local colours, I mean colours that you can normally see in uh, in these sort of scenes. So obviously green would be a local colour. Um, yellows, uh, be yellow would be local colour. Um, here I've got sort of purples, reds, um, various different colours that may not be local colours. So just adding some um, darker tones, I'm going um, richer in pigment for um, closer to the foreground and closer to um, the bottom of the paper. And that just gives a little, um, some distance in the painting. So if you're painting a scene like this, a landscape, then it's nice to have your dark darks in 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 the bottom half of the painting and then sort of fade gradually as we travel up the paper so you can see now all the different sort of colors that i'm using in the um, bottom half of the painting just on the on the land it does mix and makes quite interesting um colors and then obviously you've got the river, which is uh, dividing these two parts. So now I'm looking uh, for a stronger, darker, richer mix uh, for these uh, tree um, tree trunks. So obviously I'm going to go both sides, do um, trees on either side. And this gives a nice little frame for this scene, looking out into the distant mountains, hills, um, and going up the river so I'm just this this color is a mix of um, 
brown blue red just pretty much all the colors i've used so far and it's a very very dark mix almost a black looking color but mixed from pretty much all the colors um, that i'm using on this uh, painting itself and for the river i'm just uh, adding some of those colors uh, as well into this water just indicating some reflections here and there um, so that's what you'd see in a moving river i wanted to make it look like it's moving so hopefully i've captured that now this is what i wanted to show you um, making different marks with a hake brush you can see i'm just um just dipping the tips of the um the brush the ends of the brush into pigment and then just dabbing them in and uh, trying to go different angles turn the uh, brush round get different markings you can see how, how that's working just giving that foliage for the trees so i think that's quite a nice a nice way you can use your hake brush if you're not sure if you're not familiar with the hake brush this is one of the things you can do with that brush so obviously while you're doing this you're trying to be careful not to be too uniform not to make all the leaves look like they've been printed with the same sort of tool and then also you can use this for grasses in, in the foreground just using a brush to just gently pull the brush down slightly and it gives you these nice little tufts of grass and earth in the foreground so that's quite a nice way of uh, of using the hate brush as well you can see on the other side especially when you got a bit of a light um light in the ground and then you go with this and do dark in the in the background to that so it just gives a nice little dynamic effect it makes it look um it definitely gives a little bit of interest and uh, nice texture to the painting as well now i don't want to do too much on this scene it is quite um quite a busy scene um you can do as much or as little as you want in these scenes um i quite like these for exercise because if you've got a new brush or you want to try a new technique or you want to try something a bit different um, this is a perfect painting to do because you can sort of throw everything at it you can do try different techniques um, it's quite forgiving so you can sort of um, just make this an experiment like i said if you've got a new brush then this is perfect just um, make those marks and see what sort of marks you get from each different brush uh, this is perfect for that sort of thing so with the liner brush now just add in some darks on the right hand side of the tree so i'm imagining in this scene the sun's coming or the light's coming from the right hand uh, the, sorry the left hand side and so i'm keeping all my darker shadows on the right hand side um, so that's quite important as well i know before now i've uh, put things on completely the wrong side and got mixed up but if you imagine the light and where it's coming from then that gives you a place to put your shadows and darks so just removing the tape here we can see a nice cropped image of the painting uh, quite a nice uh, scene i do like the water and um, there's a bit of mysteriousness to this scene uh, it's quite nice and then as you look through the trees as um, very light um, you can't really make out what's behind the trees but you can see there's some sort of land of some sort and it does look quite nice and then you got these uh, markings of uh, foliage you got the grasses which are created with the hake brush um, and then liner brush you're getting all these sticks and twigs and all the different branches and it's nice to have different tones in the trees or in the branches in the uh, trunks and you got shadows and all sorts of things going on it really does look quite interesting and then of course i'm using all different colors um pushing that not really bothered about color or i'm um, looking for local colors or colors that would you, you would find in this sort of scene 
just using whatever color I feel um, more interested in the uh, tones rather than the colors and that's it uh, let me know in the comments what you think thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one take care bye bye